Hey guys, TikTok Sully here, or just Sully, back with another video, and welcome to another episode of What Happened in Fashion and Street Style. In this episode, we'll be looking at what happened in August and highlighting the noteworthy moments and releases that took place. So let's get straight into it and hope you guys enjoy. Kicking it off, we start with Anna Winter and Vogue. As at the beginning of the month, the rumours of Anna leaving the World Renowned magazine were shut down as the media company provided a statement explaining she'd be staying with the company indefinitely. The rumours of her leaving began back in July and it was something of a shock to people seeing as how long Anna has been at the head of Vogue, so the statement was awaited on. Supreme released their Fall Winter 18 collection as they followed their regular rollout of dropping a teaser followed by a preview which then led to the in-store and online release of the collection. And with a handful of cool accessories, some nice heavy outerwear, and even a crew neck box logo set to drop, this season is looking to be fairly stronger than the past few seasons from the skateboarding brand. Palace Skateboards also dropped their autumn range, which actually dropped about a week before Supreme, but they followed the same rollout technique in releasing a teaser, followed by a preview which then led to the drop. And Palace also had a good range of outerwear that released, some technical tri for crew necks, and of course a handful of printed tees. You can keep up with both brands now, as Supreme still have the majority of their collection yet to drop, whilst Palace's is almost fully available over on their website. Copenhagen Fashion Week also took place in August to showcase their Spring Summer 19 season. A variety of Danish brands showed their collections on the runway and some brands such as Astrid Andersen previewed their collections. Other brands such as Martin Ashbjorn and Helia Emil showed on the runway and these are just three brands coming out of Europe and Copenhagen Fashion Week that are making noise in the fashion world and are worth looking out for. But moving on to some more controversial news now, the rape charges against V-Loan's ASAP Bari were dropped in August as the accuser decided not to go ahead with the case. After a controversial video of Bari and a woman in a distressing situation was uploaded to Instagram back in 2017, Barry has dealt with a lot of criticism and backlash towards him as well as his v loan brand. The video that released was definitely shocking and of course it presented Barry in a bad light but with only a short 15 second clip it was hard to have an accurate outside perspective on what really happened that night. Especially since the accused and Barry had previously been friends, it wasn't as simple as claiming a rape charge as many people accused him of and rather it really only showed Barry acting in a distasteful manner. I'm glad the case has finally been resolved and the fact the accused didn't want to go ahead with it suggests Yes, it was resolved behind the scenes and hopefully she was given her due amends and hopefully Barry can learn from the situation as he realizes how his actions can have a positive or negative effect on the v loan brand. Barry was actually so sure that the allegations against him were fictional that he's now attempted to sue the accuser for defamation as he claims the woman in question only started to claim sexual assault after pressure from her lawyers. So it's definitely still a touchy subject and we just have to wait and see how it unfolds. Nike were also caught up in some controversial news in August as their collaboration with Matthew Williams that had dropped in the previous month caught the attention of the outside world and they were accused of targeting and profiting off of gang culture due to the balaclava that dropped from that collection. Of course this balaclava was one of many pieces from the Matthew Williams collaboration but the accusations were loud enough for them to remove it from their website. I think this was a good move by Nike in an attempt to keep the peace but I definitely think the accusations were a bit drastic because when you apply the piece to the collection it gives it context. The accusers claim that only gang culture would find the Bali appealing but I feel like they're unaware of what tech web really is and how a Bali fits right into it as well as its consumers. French brand Chanel announced they'd be releasing a makeup range for men entitled Boy de Chanel and the first range of products will feature an eyebrow pencil, a foundation and a matte lip balm. It debuted in South Korea on September 1st and will roll out globally this coming November and streetwear brand Stussy also announced a new store opening in London after a flagship had been missing from the capital since its last one shut down back in 2009. The news was announced around mid-August and by August 31st the store was opening its doors for the first time. The brand said celebrated by releasing some exclusive pieces at the opening and the store is now open to the public and it's located in Soho and it has a large 8 ball in the window so you'll struggle to miss it. And to round up this month I just wanted to make mention of some releases that dropped in August that I think are worth mentioning starting with Balenciaga. As they dropped a $9,000 jacket from their Fall Winter collection which instantly had articles being written about it due to its sheer size and of course outstanding price tag. I mean we do see expensive stuff being sold regularly but I guess £9,000 was a bit too outlandish for people to just act as if it was normal. Burberry also released a heritage silk shirt which features some vintage scarf prints on it as it also attempted to enter into the half and half shirt trend that other brands such as Prada are seeming to lead and Helmut Lang had a re-edition of some of their iconic pieces. A highlight of this collection was the bulletproof vest from the Fall Winter 97 collection which has now become iconic for the brand and is now available as a re-edition over on their website. Calvin Klein produced a second drop for their new CK established 1978 brand and kept to their all over prints whilst remaining youth orientated and Gucci produced a really 
really well done power mat logo t-shirt which was more of a high-end take on youthful graphics and finally italian brand moncler released two new moncler genius collaborations which were with craig green and valentino in case you didn't know moncler recently introduced a new moncler genius campaign to their brand which brought on board eight designers to reinterpret their iconic down jacket and this was done in an attempt to appeal to more customers as well as provide them with more variety when it comes to their outerwear from this drop i must say that this gray and black jacket that craig green did was probably my favorite out of the lot but valentino also produced some well crafted outerwear and as you can tell an eye for detail was definitely applied to this collaboration as well both collaborations are now available which i'll be sure to link down below for you guys to check out in full Moving on to sneakers now, the majority of hype drops that took place in August were from the same brands that have been dominating the footwear market both in sportswear, streetwear and high end. So let's take a look at their new variety. The first drop to kick off the August month was the off-white Presto, which dropped in a white colour after its contrasting black counterpart dropped in the previous month. Mason Margiela also dropped again and much like off-white, they dropped a different colourway in an already existing sneaker and this time it was the Mason Margiela Fusion sneaker which I did cover a few months back. This time the sneaker released in not one not two but five different colorways still playing with its original battered look whilst implementing some very strong and trendy colors i think all the colorways are really nice so that's a good sign and if you did want to gather them all they're still going for upwards of a thousand pounds so i'm sure you can do the math travis scott also dropped a new colorway in his air force one that he collaborated with nike on this time in a sail colorway which had a slightly off-white tone to it and unlucky for us english customers only dropped in the states luckily the resale price is only half of what the original white colorways are so obtaining this silhouette where it did become a lot easier and speaking of nike i think they can take the highlight mention of the month as they celebrated their european one year anniversary of their sneakers app which as you may know is where all the hype releases take place the sportswear brand celebrated by releasing eight hype silhouettes through their app and proposed customers to find easter egg hints to clues they had provided customers had to analyze hints which were located on the first page and then search through the app and to be able to access the purchase link you had to scratch random images on the app which people figured out once it was too late so even though it was exciting it was just another L for the majority of sneakerheads, including me. One of the eight sneakers that did drop on the anniversary was Don C's Legacy 312s, which released in three new colorways in August. And Nike didn't slow down with the hype releases after this, as they went on to release two classic Jordan silhouettes, being the Jordan 4 in a new Raptors colorway, and also a Jordan 3 in the updated Tinker iteration with the swoosh on the side and in a beige color, which was in collaboration with musician Justin Timberlake. Nike also added a few more hype releases into the month by releasing two new colorways in their recently popular Element React mod and they also went and had an exclusive supply drop of a new collaboration that was announced earlier in the month between Off-White and Serena Williams. This time the three brands being Nike, Off-White and Serena Williams remixed the already remixed Air Max 97 and changed the colours to some that were more fit for Queen. Vans also reimagined the everlasting old school checkerboard model by releasing it with an added gum sole on its heel and this approach was also applied to other Vans silhouettes but the old school checkerboard definitely seemed to work the best. I of course own a pair of the original colourway but this minimalist update is definitely making me consider picking these up as well and to round off this month we come to a sandal release from the popular japanese brand sui coke as they collaborated with the unexplored concrete objects brand to bring a lead resin sandal to the brand the sandal is a take on sui coke's core sandal model and incorporates a gray color that floods the silhouette and it's made up of premium materials such as a cow leather and suede which is the standard when it comes to sui coke's core model the side of the sandal has the names joe burns and samuel ross engraved in it whom are the two creators behind the concrete objects brand which gives us a little introduction to the brand and who's behind it and i'm sure we'll have more to see from the industrial brand as they begin their journey in production and that brings me to the end of this video and the end of this episode of what happened in fashion and street style in the month of august let me know down below what drops or announcements you guys liked out of the month and if you did gravitate towards any in particular and i hope you guys enjoyed if you did don't forget to hit that like button it always helps and is much appreciated and if you're new here and you're interested in fashion then you should also subscribe by clicking down over there as i have some more videos like this on the way and it'll just allow you to stay up to date with the uploads and i also have a place for new music over here so you can check that out for all the latest music and music videos all in this one playlist but that's all from me today thanks for watching and i'll catch you in the next one